about money. The financial strain from the economy is affecting more than just your wallet these days. Yeah, affecting relationships, whether personal or professional. Uh, they are, of course, being stretched to the limit. And uh, we're about to tell you how to breathe new life into your relationship despite those kinds of obstacles. Life coach Margie Worrell is here. You made it in. Good to see I you. I did make it in, but I agree. I've got some sore muscles from Damn. shoveling snow, too. You said your yeah. neighborhood street isn't even plowed. Yeah, yet. it still hasn't been plowed. Yeah. Wow. So I, I had to steal my husband's four wheel drive today to get here. Well, <laughs> so he's stuck at home with <laughs> he's the He's stuck other at car. home with the four kids. <laughs> but I've done my dues the last week. So there you go. It all evens out. So we're basically, you know, Valentine's. Valentine's Day is Sunday, believe it or yeah. not. I still need I to know. Make some plans. I think we've been distracted around here from Just Valentine's Day. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. But I think a lot of people, you know, money or not, don't know what to get. But um, there's just a lot of strain on us lately. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of pressure with the economy the way it is. A lot of, you know, financial pressures always end up causing some strain in relationships. But, you know, when it comes to relationships, it's not the issues that come up, it's how we deal with them. And right. I think all relationships, you know, at the end of the day, are going to have to deal and get over some hurt. And I ultimately think about Valentine's Day. It's about love. Love is as love does. Are we responding in a loving way to our partner when these issues come up? So even when there's huge stresses, it's it's the uh, the technique that you use to smooth over those rough edges that really yeah. matter here. So what are some some big don'ts when you're having issues, say, over finances in the relationship? Yeah. Well, I think. A Calling, you know, we talk about kids, don't, don't call people names. I think sometimes what people do is they fall into the trap of calling their partner. You, know, you are a loser. You are hopeless. <laughs> you are lazy. You that are thoughtless. Doesn't that doesn't usually go over well. The other thing is just saying, like, using absolutes. Like, you never help around the mm. house. You're always thoughtless with how we budget Boy, our money. That's something that so many couples do. I hear it all the time. You always do this. No, you always not, do no one that. does so, anything It's so easy always. to fall into. Yeah, no one's always doing that. But no. that one time that sticks out in your head but I think we all fall into that yeah I think it's easy to easy to do that so I think it really starts with us saying okay you know how is it that I'm causing some of the mm -hmm. stress in the relationship mm -hmm. you know I think there's like four key pillars to a great relationship one is love two is commitment three is open and honest communication and four is trust so are we acting in ways that you know are building trust that are treating the other person with respect and we can say that we're upset about something without being aggressive or saying something that's going to leave the other person feeling like they've been beaten up on how do we do that if we don't get into the you always because maybe that other person thinks that maybe you always and yeah. it has this pent up how would you recommend saying something to your partner without, you know, putting them on the defensive so yeah. quickly? I think it's good. Separate the facts with your opinion about the facts. You know, like, you know, my husband once said, to, you know, still sometimes says to me, <laughs> oh, honey, you know, I don't like it when you leave the towel hanging on the end of the bed. You know, and it's just, that's his, that's, he just doesn't that's like that. Thing. And I was like, can you please, you, you know, you, put that up? You really do that? I sometimes oh, do wow. that. I'm teasing. Okay. I'm teasing. All right, yeah. But you know, we can separate out and say, you know, you you've been home late four times this week. You know, I feel like you don't value me and and the effort I put into trying mm -hmm. to get a hot meal on the table when you just turn up late. So we can separate out what they've done with how we feel about that, how that makes us feel. Mm -hmm. But I, I think ultimately it's 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 possible to say what it is that upsets us in a way mm -hmm. that isn't putting the other person. You know, in. I always yeah. I always take that phrase. You always do that, and, and I and I file it away so that, that it's it's um, something that I remember. It's a catch word, yeah. uh, and so I bite my tongue before it comes out, and I think of ways to rephrase it. You know, yeah. I really get. You know, I've been thinking about this is uh, the second time or the third time this week that I've taken the towel off the bedpost. And, you know, yeah. do you notice it stains? You see how the stain is forming on the, yeah. the wood? So maybe we shouldn't do this. And you, <laughs> and you know what? I mean, sometimes it's you mightn't care about the things your partner cares about. You know, when I think about love, Valentine's Day, there's a lot of uh, obviously hype and expectation about it. But, you know, love is a verb. What are we doing the other 364 days of the mm -hmm. year that let the significant other in our life know that we really care about them and you know what is it that we you know our actions speak far more loudly than our words mm -hmm. do you think so, people get stuck into just the stigma it's valentine's day you've got to do it up and the yeah, pressure of it. there's a lot of pressure lot i of think pressure. there's a lot of people end up disappointed on valentine's day because they didn't get the flowers or the special note or they didn't get the proposal or the ring but you know how whether or not we're loved or not isn't determined by whether or not we get something like that on valentine's day we need to think about what is it that has that other person feel loved the rest of the year and and, and if we really want something, our partners always aren't mind readers. You know, if there's something you want or need, let them know. Tell them. 
tell them. You, I, look, honey, I want the, want the towels off the bed. I was talking to a woman <laughs> last week. She said, I'm going to let the newspapers pile up until my husband gets the hint that he needs to put them away. So you know a hint. You could leave them piled around the house and you might, might never get the hint. You might look like a hoarder before he so, actually gets the hint, right? Yeah, so tell, you know, so say, this is what I would like you to do. You know, the, I, as I said, you know, they're not mind readers. The only time my husband's a mind reader is when I scratch his car and he somehow just knows <laughs> there's something going on. But the rest of the time, it's like, hey, I need this. But all I right. think you're right with separating how you say it because it's all about the emotion, how you come across. And if you just think about it for a second, because... I, women do this, I know, D Doug knows, yeah, but I, yeah. you know, men, a uh, little different, but when we get emotional and we put that out there. Here's, a, here's a, another technique I find that you use oftentimes, is that you tend to stockpile your am ammunition. Yeah. You know, hoarding it up for the big battle, <laughs> and, and, and we don't know when the big battle's going to come, it's just like, <laughs> man, those full issues fester, don't they? And things, and things, and things those that happened three years ago or five years, I thought we'd earned that over. Yeah, but and you know I what? I thought you were <laughs> over that, that's the best line. <laughs> Are we over this? When we speak up when we're angry, we never end up helping the relationship. I mean, I don't know if you've yeah. been on the other end of that or if you've done it, but you never help it. It's really important to just keep talking those things out all the time. When you're mad, count to 10 and then think about how do I say this in a way that ultimately has us having a better relationship versus I let him know that I was right and he was wrong. Sometimes or it feels or. good, though. Sometimes it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> At what cost, Natasha? Do you exactly. need a therapy here? I might. Okay. No, we're good right now, as long as he has a present. And you know what? When it feels good for you to do that, from our end, sometimes it's better. It may not feel good. Right. It feels really bad, but just not respond. Just listen to it. Just listen to it. And don't She's say anything an event. because you know right. that ultimately you're going to feel like, this release, which sorry, is going to make I you happier, one, right. and then it's all going to kind of blow over yeah. in the long run. But if you and know, I can still leave my underwear on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but she feels bad for what she just did. It all goes together, doesn't and it? And I think, you know, too, if we've got kids that are watching, you know, how are we role modeling how you deal with the issues that come up in yeah. relationships? If kids see their mother giving their father the silent treatment, you know, what's that teaching They might them? do that down the road. Yeah. Well, Marky, thanks for coming in. <laughs> Pleasure. we got to go right now. Yeah. Happy Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, same to I'm you. I'm going to go look at your husband's SUV for scratches. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Evidence. <laughs> evidence. <laughs> all right, coming up.